Good morning. Uh, my name is Will Holder. Uh, as you know, I'm with Trendmaker Homes. Trendmaker is a uh, residential land developer and a home builder here in Houston for 44 years. I've been here for 22 years, and I, I love working for Trendmaker. I appreciate the invitation to be here today and all the help that we get from Boyer Miller, especially Stephen Johnson gives us a lot of uh, very, very valuable and worthwhile assistance in our projects. Uh, we build around town, literally, uh, primarily in the suburbs, and we do some work inside of town, but primarily at Trimaker, you'll find us in the suburbs building family and uh, move down uh, housing. But uh, onto the market, um, you know, first of all, the, the number one driver of, of, of home building and, and communities, residential communities, is going to be jobs. And then from where we sit right now today, uh, the number one driver of the market is full steam ahead. You can see that this particular, the latest uh, report from September of 14 from the Bureau of Labor Statistics shows that 119,000 new jobs in, in, in Houston right now, in the Houston Metroplex. That's the biggest number that I have seen uh, practically forever on this particular chart. And what we see in Houston or in most markets is about a three to one. This was the number that I use. If we're going to see 60,000 jobs, we're going to build about 20,000 houses. So this would indicate a, a, a very high uh, level of homes that we could build in the market. Now, of course, everybody's saying, well, what about oil? How's that going to affect us? And I've, I think most of us here have heard that we're probably expecting maybe it's going to fall off. It's going to be maybe 60,000 new jobs or 70,000 new jobs. And I think that's, that's still a very strong number. We've had a great residential market in Houston with 60, 70,000 new jobs a year. There's a lot of steam built up in this engine. And so, you know, the, the, yes, the price of oil is down, and yes, this is going to impact us. But, you know, I've, I've heard that race car drivers say if there's a wreck out in front of you, you head right straight for the wreck, and it won't be there when you get there. And so that's kind of the way home builders operate, you know. <laughs> if, if, if we see a wreck, we just put the car right on it and go for it and hope it's gone. Uh, you can see that this, this translation of the number one housing market does translate to the, or the number one job market does translate to the number one housing market. And so uh, that's, that's what's going on here. We're the number one market in the city, in the, in the country, as you know. Existing homes, they're not able to keep up. We're seeing you know, 20,000 new homes on MLS against 80,000 transactions a year. It's a two and a half, you know, three month, uh, three and a half month uh, level of inventory. And what happens when it gets this low, the choices that you have in those homes are not as great as when there's 25, 30,000 homes to choose from. So this is a reflection of a lot of different things. Why, why are people not listing is the first question, and we'll touch on that in a minute, but it has more to do uh, with why people aren't listing than it, are, they, are there that many transactions. You can see builders, of course, we always try to do our part to help out, and this year is no exception. We've got the most spec homes under construction that we've had in the last four years. So, you know, we're, we're trying to help it out, but if you look at our completed inventory, builders, and I'd like to thank Metro Study, by the way, for allowing me to use their slides. It's a great resource that Trendmaker uses often. Uh, you can see that we have the lowest inventory of completed specs that we've had in four years uh, while we're building the most amount of homes, spec homes under construction right now in the last four years. So <clears throat> we're trying, we're putting the specs out there and we're doing everything we can. There's lots of constraints that are keeping us from putting more specs on the ground than we would like. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But one of those constraints is, are, are new lots. New lots uh, since uh, 2008 have lagged starts. Now, that took a lot of lots that had been developed during the, the boom days, the go-go days, and absorbed those. And so that's a pretty healthy situation in reality. At some point, it has to change. And you can see that those two, the red and the black lines, are converging, and we're heading back towards a normal situation. But lot shortages continue to persist and create a uh, little bit of havoc in the uh, home building market, you can see that the vacant developed lot inventory, the, the real item to look at in this chart is the black line. You can see about 14, 15 months of inventory. Well, how long does it take to develop lots? It, it takes about 18 months. So this is really like a zero inventory of lots. And you can see here that uh, there's 79,000 future lots. These are in some form of platting or development or 
uh, planning. But if you take those columns over there, you see the vacant land represents 56,000 of the 79,000. There's about 22,000 lots if you add up those, those little, little pieces and they're, they're staked, there's equipment on the ground, they're, uh, they're uh, paved or there's streets. That's 22,000, we're doing about 22,000 starts. So that's essentially a, a, a complete, it's like full employment. I mean, we are literally, we're having to buy our lots years in advance, one, two, three years in advance. We're working, everything we're doing today will, will play out in 2016, 17. Uh, and this is showing up in the sales offices. I mean, we're, we're a retail business, we're a home builder. We have 20 odd number of stores open seven days a week. From 10 to 6, it's a retail business, and you can see for the last four years, the number of stores uh, is a constant. And so we're, we're really, we're, we're doing more sales out of fewer stores, which are the same number of stores, which I like quite a bit, but still. Uh, there's a lot of capacity constraints, and those constraints include raw materials. Concrete would be the, the best example. We used to pay $30 a yard for concrete, now we're paying 90, talking about it cost as much as 110. Uh, licensed mechanical contractors, if you're an electrician or a plumber and you're, you have a license, it's a great thing to have. You know, all the plumbers I know have big boats and boat houses and stuff. It's a, uh, if you, I heard if you let your daughter marry a, a plumber, she'll never go hungry, and, and in fact, she will not. Uh, the framers, carpenters, trim crews, they've found a lot of other ways to make businesses during the recession. I mean, we were building 50,000 50, houses, went down to 17. Uh, they kept doing something, and, and they're not really that anxious to come back to work for us in many cases. So uh, factory fabricated components, cabinets, countertops, doors, windows, these things that are brought to your job, very, very tight capacity in those, those facilities where they're manufacturing these. They actually closed inefficient plants and so forth, and so now that the markets come back, they're, they're a little stingy with their materials and want a lot of money for them. Professional service providers, architects, engineers, surveyors, all of these uh, people are in tight demand. I mean, if you want to replat or you need to get some architectural work done, it's tough. It's tough to uh, engineer and get your plans engineered. I mean, a local um, David Weekly Homes, one of our best builders nationally and in Houston, uh, during this recession had bought an architectural firm, a little unusual uh, thing for a builder to do, but it's really buying capacity because you need it. I mean, it's hard to get your plans out these days. Uh, equipment, uh, heavy contractors, site work. I mean, the, I've heard stories of, you know, the developers go to bid. They have two, three contractors show up to bid. And they're like, okay, you get this one, Alan, I'll get the next one. You know, it's not, the bidding is not like it used to be because it's a, con it's a finite amount of equipment. So today's residential environment, it's overheated cost. I mean, you can see what's happening to the lots, then you look at the materials and the cabinets and the concrete, and you know, it's a lot of cost escalation. So uh, high lot prices, high construction cost, you know, what does that mean? It, it creates market resistance. I mean, people that are local are, are they think, well, you know, I think I'm gonna get a, I bought a, I bought a beautiful $375,000 turnmaker home several years ago. Let's go, let's splurge, let's get a $500,000 turnmaker home, go buy a new one, sell our home. They go fi find out that the home they bought for 375 now costs 500. So you can buy the same home for your 500 and they back off, you know. Uh, there's, we're testing price elasticity. Uh, we're still operating inside the margins of, of, uh, of uh, the median, uh, income versus the median price of the home. Our market is healthy. You can buy a home in Houston, it's affordable, but, but we're testing that. We're finding out where people are willing to go with their prices. Uh, listing hesitation, back to that, the, 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 the people that are, you know, the 20,000 homes instead of 25 that are there, they're, they're not jumping into it. They're remodeling. I have friends that, you know, putting in beautiful new bathrooms because they decided their house is now close in and they didn't, they always liked it anyway and they don't, they'll get over the fact they have a big second floor they don't use. Uh, renting, people are renting, lots of renters in the market. Uh, they, they got in at different points that moved here but they're, they're gonna maybe stay another year, see what happens. Uh, it's just pure market hesitation all the way around. And, and I think that we could do more homes if we had capacity. We could do more homes if people, uh, you know, saw what they were going to go do. But the demand fundamentals, in, in my opinion, are in place. I think that we've got enough steam to push us through. 
uh, this dip in oil, and I, you know, we'll see how it lasts. Six months ago, we had, you know, price was double, and it can change in six months. We've seen it. So, uh, new home prices are still within the medians, as I mentioned, and despite challenges, a supply-rich environment that Houston have has self-corrects. I mean, we went from uh, 50,000 starts down to uh, 17,000 starts, and the market, uh, the builders, the infrastructure, it, it can adjust and it will adjust to, uh, to, to be, it's resilient, it's flexible, same thing. Lots of competition keeps the market creative and fresh. We have lots of new uh, builders coming to Houston all the time and everybody that reads a, a business section, uh, if you're a builder in another city, you're trying to choose a new market, they're likely to come to Houston. Uh, new rooftops keep everyone's market alive, everybody at this table, and we're, we're there, people are coming, we're gonna move them into houses, and they're gonna need some retail. So, I appreciate it, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, thank you very much. Alan, thank you, sir.